you strong. Hello all and welcome to the channel. I am Masked Gaming and today I bring to you the Whippersnapper Magicka Dragon Knight PvP build as of the Stonethorn patch which is currently in PTS and will be released on consoles in the coming weeks. A small disclaimer, there is no dueling footage this week due to lag and lack of good conditions to show you all the best possible fighting that this build can actually achieve. Personally, Magicka Dragon Knights are not met are not my area of expertise, however this build was recommended by friends and viewers, so here it is. So now let's get into the video. As you can see we are a high elf with 64 points into Magicka, and as you can see through my stats we have quite high base stats to work with, it's quite strong this build is. We have 35,000 maximum Magicka, 21,000 maximum health, and we only have 10k maximum stamina, but that is not a big problem at all. We have 2.8k spell damage, which is quite nice. A low spell critical rating, but that doesn't matter, as you'll see in the build. We do have 20k physical resist spell resistance and 17k physical. However, if I switch to my back bar, you can see that on the character sheet, we have 24k and 22k physical and spell resistance unbuffed. However, if I just quickly press one ability, as you can see, my resistances go up to nearly 30k each. So this is quite strong, quite tanky, as I will explain how very shortly. We are running the Witch Mother's Potent Brew, and we are running the Apprentice Munderstone. This just helps out with general playing, because having more spell damage and having more... Uh, Magicka Recovery and Max Magicka and Max Health is always quite nice to work with. Now if we move on to skills. On our front bar we are running Flame Lash. Now Flame Lash is quite nice, it hits for 9.5k flame damage and if it hits an enemy that is immobilised or stunned you set them off balance. Hitting an off balance enemy or an immobilised enemy changes this ability into Power Lash allowing you to lash an enemy at half cost and deal 11.1k flame damage and heal you for 14k over 2 seconds. This effect can occur once every 3 seconds. This is quite nice, this is our main spammable actually, so when I explain the rotation later on, you'll see how it works. Next up we have Degeneration. Now Degeneration, for those of you who don't know, is the Morph of Entropy, and this ability comes from the Major's Guild skill line. Now the Major's Guild skill line is quite important for magical builds, as it increases your maximum magical ball by about 3% per ability slotted, if I'm not mistaken, it may be 5%. Plus as well, the damage over time it gives you of 16.4k over 12 seconds is very nice, but the main reason I run this is because Magica, Magicka Dragon Knights do not really have an efficient way of giving themselves Major Brutality or Major Sorcery. But Degeneration applies Major Sorcery while also hitting them with that dot at a low cost of 2.2k maximum Magicka and it is ranged so you can hit this from a long range if needs be. I personally like this ability, it's very strong, it hits quite hard but that is just your personal preference. This ability can be swapped out for uh, Magicka Drain Elemental Drain in the Inferno Staff ability line. What this does is it gives you 600 Magicka per attack that you do against an enemy that you target with it. And it's just good for sustain. However, I do recommend keeping Degeneration on. You could swap out one of these skills for Magicka Siphon if needs be. Next up we have Engulfing Flames. Now this is another damage over time ability and what it does is it actually increases the damage that the enemies take by 10% of all your flame based attacks. Now pretty much all of our abilities are flame damage so putting this on an enemy means they're taking up to 10% more damage based on our spell damage. As you can see my current value is 9% that means that the bonus that I'm getting against an enemy is 9% bonus flame damage against an enemy. Now next up we have our main stun. Now this is very important. Fossilize is actually quite a nice stun. Yes, it costs a lot of Magicka. However, this target cannot dodge or block this stun. They have to be immobilized and it works 100% of the time. Yes, they can break free. However, this ability actually is quite smart. 
it does not allow you to recast it until they can be stunned again. Meaning if you think that you can spam it, don't worry about it. As soon as it becomes available again, you cast this ability, the enemy will be stunned, allowing you to tie that in to your flame lash, which will then hit them off balance and heal you and do bonus damage. Now next up, our fifth ability, I was trying to figure out what to put in here. You could put Elemental Drain on this, however, Burning Talons is quite nice, it's an extra stun, it's an extra damage over time on it, and if you've got any people with you, your allies can target use a synergy on the target, allowing them to hit even harder against that one person. It's a nice stun, this can be spammed, but it doesn't actually stun them properly, I find it's kind of a dodgy stun in my opinion. Now for our ultimate, we're using Take Flight. Now Take Flight is a controversial one. You could use this version as it does physical damage and knocks them back and stuns them. However, the other version, the Flame Damage variant, would do more damage if you mixed it with the Engulfing Flames ability or if you just wanted to stack as much damage as you can into your Flame Damage abilities, I would recommend using that one as it gives you a damage shield on cast as well, allowing for extra tankiness. Now on our back bar, I forgot to mention earlier that we are a stage 4 vampire. Now stage 4 vampire is quite controversial, not many people like it, a lot of people do like it. It's It fluctuates. Stage 4 means that our abilities cost more, but our vampire abilities cost less, and that ties into how, how we can hear raw damage, as I'll explain later on. Now Swarming Scion, what it does is it applies a dot around you when you cast the ability. This ability is the werewolf variant in a vampire, allowing you to transform into a massive vampire demon almost, giving you an extra 10k health, mag and stam in your resource pools already you've got that you've already got, and it instantly heals you to full health. You heal for 15% of all the damage you deal, and the 3.1k magic damage every one second to enemies near you is always very nice. Now because we are running sword on board we don't really have many heals, we don't have access to the restoration staff heals, so we're running coagulating blood from the dragon knight skill line. I chose this because yes it costs magicka but the amount you can heal is insane, also it increases based on the amount you're missing, so the more health that you've lost the stronger the heal, you can burst heal straight away to maximum health. Now this fourth slot I was kind of confused about what to put in but I decided on defensive stance, it's a stamina damage shield that lasts for 6 seconds and it scales off of your max health which we have quite a bit of. It reflects direct damage projectiles and while you have the shield equipped the amount of damage you can block is increased by 10% and the cost of blocking is reduced by 10% so you can tank more when you're blocking. Now next up obviously we have Fragmented Shield, this is not really used as a damage shield more as a healing buffer as having this cast gives us major mending for 6 seconds which will increase the amount we get healed from coagulating blood by a further 25% making this heal very valid in PvP. Now, as you saw earlier, we're using Hardened Armor as our resistance booster. This resistance booster increases our resistances by 5k for 20 seconds, and it also gives us a damage shield for 3.3k, lasting for 6 seconds. Now, Blood Mist. This is our last ability that I'm going to cover in today's video. Blood Mist is quite a nice one. We're running Stage 4 Vampire to reduce the cost of this ability. This ability not only reduces our damage taken by 75% while it's cast, but you also deal a slight dot around people, and you also heal for the damage caused. In PvP, this translates to about 700 magic damage every second, then translating to 700 health per bit that you hit. And this is not limited to one person, so if you're surrounded by a lot of people, Having this ability active will basically make you invincible with the amount of healing you're getting and the low, low amount of damage that you're taking. You can heal back up to max health if you're going up against people in those 1vx situations. It also gives you immunity to all immobilization effects, but it means you cannot be healed other, by, other than by yourself. Which means you, you need this ability to heal you, otherwise you will not be able to survive. Your magicka recovery is disabled during this ability's cast, so that means once your magicka is gone, it is gone. Now, 
The reason I'm running stage 4 vampire is as you can see here in the vampire skill line, the passives are very helpful. Not only do you get very fast sneaking and reduced sneak time, that's just the base, you also get this passive here. Now this passive is very important in driving up the numbers. When you leave sneak invisibility or mist form, your weapon and spell damage is increased by 300 for 6 seconds. So for 6 seconds after mist form is left, you're getting more just pure damage. Next up, for being stage 3, you get Undeath. Undeath is a passive that reduces your damage taken by up to 30% based on your missing health, making you more tanky in those execute scenarios. And finally, at stage 4, reduces the cost of sprint by 50%, and if you continuously sprint for 3 seconds, you become invisible. You'll notice that this ties in with the Strike from the Shadows, making you invisible, meaning that when you stop sprinting, you're going to have more weapon and spell damage in case you get ambushed by somebody. So you've got that more damage to survive with. Now let's move on to the gear. Now today I thought I'd mix things up a little bit. We're actually running 5 Clever Alchemist, 5 Crafty Flake, and 2 Grothdar, along with the mythic item added in Greymore Patch, the Malakath's Band of Brutality. We have a 5 heavy 2 light setup to maximise resistances and increase our health pool. The Alphleek helps out with our max magicka pool as you saw earlier, and the Clever Alchemist holds that damage output for us to use as and when we please. Now we have a very strange setup today, we're doing something called backbarring. Now for those of you who don't know, backbarring is when it, you use a mythic item and it allows you to use two sets while making one set constantly active and making sure the other set is only active on the back bar. We have chosen Clever Alchemist for the back bar because it allows us to use something on the defensive and then allowing us to bring it to the front bar when we go out attacking. Now on our front bar we're running a Crafty Alpha Leaks Inferno Staff. I'm running it in Precise. This should be Nern Honed. I just ran out of Transmit Crystals. This would mean that our spell damage can go even higher. You could run it in defending for tankiness, but that is your personal choice. Or infused, or even charged to increase the amount of status effects that you have on somebody. Inferno staffs are very versatile, so choose whichever way feels comfortable for you. We're running a shock glyph to increase our damage done to the enemy, as shock causes 8% increased damage done to the target. Next up we have the Clever Alchemist Mace, in defending with a weapon damage enchantment. This increases our weapon and spell damage by 174 for 5 seconds. And the defending trait increases our physical and spell resistance by 1.6k. We have a Clever Alchemist Shield next, with a Tri-Stack Glyph on there, with Nernhound. Now Nernhound is quite a tricky one. Running a Nernhorn shield means that your physical and spell resistances go up by 253. This may not seem a lot, however, running a reinforced would give you a lower amount and would not mean that you're getting that balance of physical and spell resistance, which is what you want to do when you're maintaining a PvP build. You want your resistances to be balanced, allowing you to be versatile against any enemy you come up against rather than just being able to resist melee attacks. As I said earlier, we're running Grotha. This piece is in Heavy and in Divines. All of the pieces are in Divines with a max health enchant on the helmet. We're running a max health enchant on our Clever Alchemist Heavy Cuirass in Divines as well. We're running Light Grotha Epulets with Max Magicka and Divines. A Crafty Elf Leak Sash with Divines and Max Magicka. A Clever Alchemist Gauntlet in Heavy with Max Magicka and Divines. Heavy Clever Alchemist Greaves with Max Magicka and Divines. The Heavy, heavy Clever Alchemist Sabatons with Max Magicka and Divines. We're running Infused Crafty Alphalique Amulets and Ring with Spell Damage and Clans on them. And finally, we're running Malakath's Band of Brutality as I explained earlier. Increases our damage done by 25%, but means we cannot deal critical hit damage. However, I've kept it as bloodthirsty, now a lot of people change it to infused, however with this build I thought I would experiment with the idea of running bloodthirsty in a PvP sense, and I will be honest, bloodthirsty works quite well in PvP. Increased weapon and spell damage to enemies under 90% health, 
up to 350. This means that you're getting an extra 170 by the time they hit 50% health on average. That's how I've calculated it. And this works quite well in PvP and PvE senses alike. This build really does have the versatility and the tankiness to be able to do things efficiently. And I personally just love using the Malakast Band of Brutality because it means that my damage is set rather than chanced. Now let's move on to the champion points. First of all in the green in the tower we have 20 points into Warlord and 1 point into Siphoner. We have 100 points into Arcanist, 50 points into Healthy, 50 points into Tenacity, 25 points into Tumbling, 24 points into Shadow Ward. Next up in the Apprentice in the blue section now, we're running 50 points in Elfborn, 50 points in Elemental Expert, 50 points into Spell Erosion, then we move on to the Atronarch, 60 points into Master of Arms, we move on to the Ritual and we run 60 points into Tharmaturge. Now on to the Steed which is the red section, we have 60 points into Ironclad, 60 points into Resistant, we move on to the Lady where we have 50 points into Hardy and Elemental Defender, and then we have 20 points into Thick Skinned, and we have 30 points into Heavy Armor Focus. And that is it for the Champion Points. Now, I thought I would demonstrate the rotation for this build for you guys, as it makes it a lot easier for you to learn rather than me just spouting words to you guys about this build. Because at the end of the day, what good is a build video if you don't understand how to actually fight with it? So as you can see, I've got my target skeleton Khajiit here with all my Munda stones around. Just felt like it was a nice touch. Now, if you don't mind me, I'm going to mute my audio. And so we start off the fight. We pre-buff. This is for a dueling context. We pre-buff with our resistance booster, then with our healing booster. And then, if you're feeling like it, and you want to go for go straight in with the burst damage, you start off with Mist Form. You start off with Mist Form, do a bit of damage, uncast it, cast your potion, switch to your front bar, cast Entropy, cast your Engulfing Flames, cast your Talons. You're supposed to cast your Fossilize, but for some reason I can't, because this is a target dummy. And then you just spam your Lash. Now the reason you spam your Lash is because it can actually heal you when you do a lot of damage with it. So I'll just go over that again. Resistance Booster, Healing Booster, Mist Form, cast your Potion when it's ready, switch to your Front Bar, put down Entropy, make sure you put down that Engulfing Flames, do a Light Attack between every one of your abilities, and you will be hitting very hard. Now as you can see Grothdar is only ticking for 2k on this ad. However, that's not a big deal. 2k translates into 1k into PvP, which is more than enough damage. When you get it, be sure to use your ultimate. It's a lot of damage. As you can see, that's 4k there for the add. It just does a lot of damage. This build is very strong for all-round combat. It's brilliant for open world. I personally used it on the Xbox. Uh, it took me a while to get everything leveled up because I am actually a Xbox player playing on the PTS so I go back onto the Xbox I made this build and I went into Cyrodiil I'm actually a lower CP on Xbox so I had to try and make this build really well to cope against the top tier 810 players and this build handled its own I wasn't as tanky as everybody else was but then again mag is always going to be squishier than Stam in my opinion and I feel like I held my own and did a lot of damage, managed to get a few 1v3s, sadly I didn't record them to transfer them onto this video, otherwise I would have if I knew that I was going to be doing a mag DK build anytime soon. So yeah, that concludes it there guys. I will throw up a screenshot at the end of the video of what spell damage and resistances this build can help to. I do have a screenshot of me hitting 4.7k spell damage on this build with everything buffed up. So I'll be sure to throw that up at the end of the video quickly. So yes, I'll leave up the character sheet for now. 
and thank you all very much for watching please leave a like and comment in the video and if you want to see a certain build made i will make it just leave a comment and i will do it on a voting system about which build i'm going to be doing next this is just a quick video today but next week i will make sure to have dueling footage and get that all sorted for you guys to see the maximum potential of the builds i make and again this is masked gaming i'll catch you guys in the next video Thank you very much.